with the current economic climate, um, how can we expect the existing venture capital model to change over the next few years, especially in light of what's happened in the past year? Well, I think it's a really interesting question. I think in a lot of respects, we still don't really know the answer as to how it's going to change. But I do think we will end up seeing, first of all, a lot more diversity in terms of funds. Mm -hmm. Within the last couple of years, we've seen an explosion in what some people are calling super angel funds, very small funds doing typically around the size of 50 to 100 million dollars. We're doing investments of really only a couple million dollars a piece. And the idea that they're doing is that they don't need to have some big IPO to make a lot of money, but they can simply just grow a company, sell it for 10, 15, 20 million dollars to a corporate acquirer and still be in a situation where they can um, make, make a very nice return for what they're doing. I think we're also going to see a much more global venture capital industry that in many respects one can argue that the, not only is the locus of innovation becoming much more diverse, but also that the sheer economic growth in markets like China and India are likely to translate into a lot of opportunities for consumer-oriented companies, particularly in spaces like digital media. So I think that those two trends, first of all, the kind of the disruption of the established order with the emergence of you know, smaller, more targeted groups, and secondly, the globalization, and particularly the emergence of world-class groups in what I suspect will be many of the emerging markets are really two of the very large trends that we'll see as a result of all the changes that are taking place. What makes a great venture capitalist? Well, I think that's a great question. If we really knew how to do that and put it in a <laughs> bottle, uh, we'd be very happy indeed. Mm -hmm. It seems that it's clear that success in venture capital is really co a combination of several different things. There's clearly an element of instinct and intuition which probably in large part comes from experience of seeing lots of companies and seeing lots of deals. But there's also very much a self-fulfilling aspect that being, being a successful venture capitalist in the past makes, it, makes one much easier to be a successful venture capitalist in the future. That not only do you require the kind of reputation that leads entrepreneurs to seek you out and to choose you for their funding rather than somebody else who's offering them money, but also it also leads to relationships with corporations, investment banks, and others, which again allows one to be able to help portfolio companies at a time when uh, markets get difficult or when there are recessionary environments. Those, those connections can really pay off. Your upcoming book, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, examines some problems and solutions in the venture capital arena. What are a few of those? Well, I think today we're really seeing a sense that there is a bit of a crisis in the venture arena, that we have a lot of funds which are out there which are finding it hard to raise follow-on funds, largely because they haven't been able to exit investments. And at the same time, there's this, a need, a perceived need, which is as great as ever, or even greater than ever, for, uh, for green sprouts, for kind of innovative, innovative companies which can generate economic growth and uh, stimulate the economy. So as a result, we're seeing a lot of efforts in a lot of corners of the world by governments to try to stimulate venture, venture capital activity, yet the problem is so often these programs don't end up being very successful. So in the book, explore both what the case is for public sector intervention, what the pitfalls are, and how essentially the role of public sector can be positive in terms of trying to foment more venture activity. Mm -hmm. And on the topic of governments, um, what advice would you have to the U.S. government or, and to any, or, and or any other foreign government for, for venture capital and economic development? Well, I think there's really three important things that really are, are I think, key issues. One of which is um, not just simply focusing on handing out money. I think there's often a strong temptation on the part of politicians to immediately go to handing out funds. But it's clear that to have a successful venture, venture ecosystem, one really needs a lot of preconditions, that having a tax policy that encourages risk-taking and rewards, re rewards capital gains, having a, uh, a system with not undue regulations for, for startup companies, uh, where the supply of technologies coming out of universities is readily available without excessive red tape, 
all this stuff very much is important in terms of making the sort of preconditions for the environment. Secondly, it's important to rely on, uh, on the market, that rather than just simply sitting in Washington or sitting in Brussels and saying, let's have funding for solar companies doing wide arrays, it works much better when there essentially can be some reliance on matching funds, which gives some clue as to what private investors are interested in. And then the public funds can complement and, in fact, even sweeten the private investments that are being made. And third, there's a need for a lot of attention to the implementation of these things, because far too often, even with the best of intentions, there's been a variety of rules in terms of implementation that have ended up being self-defeating. You say that you believe venture, cap, venture activity is unlikely to disappear. Why is that? Well, I think that ultimately the crucial driver of venture activity is like to be, likely to be the degree of dynamism in the economy and the nature of innovation. And I think that particularly when we look on a worldwide basis, it seems very hard to make a, a case that innovation is disappearing, that certainly from spending a lot of time going around to business schools, it certainly doesn't seem that the appetite for young people, or I think people more generally, for going and trying to control their own destiny in an entrepreneurial company has, a, has slackened it off. And I think um, there's also an increased awareness on the part of the public sector of the fact that essentially they can do a lot to encourage venture capital and that getting the, the rules right to encourage it is something that's an important priority for a government. So I think all three of these things augur well for the long-term future of venture capital. It may not all be in Sand Hill Road. In fact, I think one of the certainties is we're going to see a lot less venture activity on a relative basis in the U.S. compared to markets like, like India, China, and probably many other places like Brazil and places we may not have even thought of. But I think that it's clear that venture capital is going to play a role going forward in terms of the economy. And on the topic of globalization, India, China, Brazil, um, you were just inferring globalization is, is about to accelerate. Um, which national markets are the, are the prime candidates for that acceleration? And you just named three of them. Why are those three? Well, I think that, you know, among many others. Right, exactly. I mean, I think you can certainly make uh, you know, a plausible case for a number of places as venture capital hubs. But I think the, the part of the strength or part of the appeal of uh, countries like, like China and India and Brazil Represent, reflects both the extent to which innovative activity is increasing in these places, you know, funded both by U.S. corporations as, and European corporations, as well as uh, local companies that are emerging onto the global stage, and also the presence of strong consumer demand. I think if you think about a market like, uh, like China, it's clear that the appetite for for instance, digital media stuff more generally is very broad. Now, it may be that it takes somewhat different different forms. So rather than being, uh, you know, stuff that's all driven by you know high stuff on high end PDAs, it ends up being you know, you know, sh short 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 shows and uh, subway cars in Shanghai, or um, or you know many other many other kinds of uh, examples of digital media outlets. But I think that. The, the presence of a rapidly growing and, uh, and an increasing, with increasing wealth of uh, consumer base is likely to translate into um, certainly more opportunities for venture funds as well. Okay. Josh, thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks. Yeah.